Hi, Steve Cooper, Rank Success, and today's video is for me uh, one where I can share some real insights with you from a sergeant to inspector candidate. So it's very much some insights from going from the promotion journey from sergeant to inspector. It's a snapshot of one individual's feedback, one individual's journey, if you like, and. Uh, I think these things sometimes are really um, insightful for you to listen to. They're certainly insightful for me as to what candidates tend to pick up from uh, you know, the materials I offer. So my free digital toolkits, my free blogs, uh, and my free podcasts, which you can find at ranksuccess.co.uk or policepromotion.blog. And for me, this week has been a particularly good one. I've had quite a few testimonials from people. Not everybody gives me a testimonial. Some people are kind enough to share uh, their experience. And for many of you, I know sometimes it's just a, to write a passage. It is a part of a process. And you know, you pick up the resources. You do the best you can. You. You, you get through the, the promotion exam, you get through the board, and tomorrow's another day, you know, you get posted, you're in harness as a new sergeant, a new inspector, and there's not very much time sometimes to just sit back and reflect and to listen. And as I'm gonna to do today, just share some feedback from an individual um, about their experience so that you can kind of listen and, and think, well, look, does that reflect my journey? Are there some things in there that I might find helpful? I certainly do. And I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read it out. So I'm going to read out the uh, feedback. There's there's quite a bit that was sent uh, by this individual. As I say, some people are kind enough to share uh, their feedback. Sometimes that looks like a couple of lines. Sometimes it's just thanks ever so much, Steve. I passed. Um, and sometimes it's a real, um, you know, uh, an in-depth kind of reflective process. Uh, on, on a few points that were helpful, that were valuable, and those are the things that I pick up on and kind of change my approach, adapt my approach, um, include certain things, perhaps exclude certain things, so that my toolkits and my coaching is as good as it can be for what I'm trying to do, which is to get as many people through this process as possible. Uh, and if you want to go along and have a look at the testimonials at ranksuccess.co.uk, you can see hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. There are, in fact, thousands um, of people that have been through and got successful and bought um, my guides. Uh, and I just wanted today just to kind of share some of that with you. So I'll just start now and we'll go through this together. And uh, I'll be interested in any comments you want to leave at the bottom. Um, Steve, just a few lines to share with you. I finally passed my inspector board at my fifth attempt. So again, for me, I reflect on that and go, well, look, it's the first time this individual um, has used my products. So what was different this time? You know, what happened this time? It's not unusual. It's not uncommon for people to do that. Uh, you will see in my testimonials that some people have been seven, eight, nine, twelve times for a promotion before. Just have a think about the emotional investment in that, and what a chunk of your career that might be for the fact that you could just coach yourself, pick up a digital toolkit, and start working through and thinking through the material in perhaps a slightly different way than what you've uh, approached it with to date and with your own operational experience. Uh, hopefully you can raise your awareness and incrementally build your confidence because I think that's what's happened here. Um, I can't thank you enough for the content, the ideas, and the information that you provide in your Inspector Digital Toolkit and exclusive content in addition to your free blogs. So clearly a signposting indication to you there that there's a whole wealth, a whole breadth of information available to you, both for free, but also in premium digital toolkits. You can download straight away to your iPad uh, or your computer and just crack on with it. Just hit the ground running uh, with your own effective preparation. Your guides and mnemonics help me recall relevant information whilst keeping my evidence above and beyond the strategic awareness that the role of inspector needed for my interview. This investment in myself was certainly worth the money spent. So again, a couple of in insights there as to how useful mnemonics were. For those of you who've listened to my videos before, um, you'll know that I um, recommend and encourage you to think about using mnemonics because what's the point in, you know, there's enough information to remember 
ahead of a promotion opportunity and whilst you're in the process so why not make it easy on yourself and think about things through mnemonics uh, they are a way of chunking information so you only have to remember the mnemonic and uh, it helps your flow and your thinking and you're remembering the mnemonic and not a whole load of information so that's something that I include in my toolkits this was the only board that I walked out of and I couldn't remember a thing about the questions it was also a mentally draining experience so a tough test um, but one which if you've prepared and you've put the time in to prepare should be a fair one uh, and it should be a robust kind of conversational issue and um, during the interview I did feel I built good rapport with the panel who asked me questions around my evidence that I felt indicated they were interested in my evidence uh, rather than going through the motions um, and I think if you've prepared effectively and you've prepared well you have that level, that degree of confidence, that extra bit of confidence that allows you to think about what an interview is, which is a, um, it's a professional conversation. You know, the board are there, they've prepared, they've got their questions, they're there to kind of interview you, uh, and that is an interview, and they want to hear your views, and so a conversation is a good way of thinking about it and I often encourage candidates to think about their promotion board, their interview opportunity as a professional conversation because there's a slightly different perspective to that and I also include a conversational management model mnemonic which works for lots of people particularly for forward facing questions uh, in my digital toolkits as well and so it's nice to, for me to see that this individual was able to build up that rapport uh, through the confidence that they had uh, so that they could kind of approach it as a conversational interview. Uh, he says, although it didn't feel like it at the time, on reflection it was. So that's about having a plan before you go in and thinking about it as a conversation. <clears throat> I feel I prepared well and I knew I had approximately four months to prepare. During that time I split time amongst the key areas, rear and forward facing questions and the presentation. I worked with your material as an exam timetable and I was accountable to myself and I spent sufficient time on each key area. Well that's a breakdown of the approach, the plan, uh, so working back from your opportunity uh, and then working forward to it. What needs to have happened for you to arrive at that interview door in a good place, in a good mindset, with raised awareness and heightened confidence so you can walk in and deliver the best version of yourself. Clearly it happened here. Um, and here's some of the reasoning for it. I have never prepared for an interview board like this with such planning and application, but it definitely worked. I spent time developing and refining my presentation skills, including getting the timings right. I worked on the theory of three for my presentation, three issues that I would address and three points for each issue I, I identified. From writing this out and tweaking and committing it to memory, in addition to some mock and practice questions, it built up to around 30 hours of study time. Now that's quite an interesting insight because I often say that for every hour uh, or every minute of a presentation, you have to... Um, in order to do well is generally around an hour of preparation for every 10 minute delivering your presentation and this kind of feedback reflects that 30 hours of preparation to practice some of the timings and I sat down with individuals and listened to their presentations and there is definitely a skill to getting your timings and getting it used to feeling what 10 minute presentations like you're going to have 45 minutes or an hour to prepare beforehand and then you've got to walk in and deliver your 10 minute presentation and very often on the back of that you've got a 50 minute or an hour's interview on that so you've got to be on the ball you've got to be able to cut the mustard and when you walk in thinking about it now and having a plan now uh, and having some options and models now to think through will help you when you walk in to be more um, confident instead of walking in there thinking you know what goodness me what's going to be on the, those pieces of paper when I turn them over you can actually walk in and go do you know what I've got two or three models in my head here and I know one of them is going to fit this scenario like a hand in glove um, so that's all part of your preparation and so getting used to that timing and understanding what timing uh, feels like 10 minutes is important it's an important part of preparation and lots and lots and lots of people don't do that so you will get marked uh, down if you are considerably under or considerably over and sometimes I know some some forces have a clock in the room and if you go one minute over that they'll just cut you dead 
down there. Thanks very much. So your wonderful conclusion that you had prepared, ready? They're never going to get to hear it. So there's something to be said for that, and clearly it worked here. Uh, and 30 hours is, a, is an undertaking, isn't it? Uh, but they split down the areas that they needed to work on. Um, Forward-facing questions, rear-facing questions, the type of questions, plus the presentation element itself, and unsurprisingly, did well in the process. So for preparation on rear-facing questions, I took your advice regarding writing out my example in full first. I later reduced this to make it feel natural to talk about and to not sound scripted. On my forward-facing questions, I again adopted the power of three, giving three things I would do and how and why in answering each question. I honestly felt like I was preparing for multiple exams, but by splitting each key area into an hour of study, I would leave no stone unturned by committing sufficient time to understand each one. So clearly this focus here from this individual has been pretty resolute over a period of time and effective preparation is generally what converts uh, aspiration into promotion success. So um, looking at this around, it talks about the power or the rule or the theory of threes. You'll know from my interview guide, if you read that, that I talk about the rule of threes. If you're walking into a promotion preparation, uh, a promotion presentation, and that's part of your process or a briefing, and you say you're going to deliver six or seven points of this plan or this model, or you're going to use this structural framework to deliver it. No, you're not. No one's ever going to get to hear more than three points, really. And so just thinking about uh, a approach where less is more for a promotion presentation you go in there thinking around well look I understand psychologically human beings are hardwired to the rule of threes veni vidi vici I came I saw I conquered um, you know a miles a day helps you work rest and play uh, run hide tell if you notice it a lot of markets a lot of products use um, the rule of three psychologically even though you don't know it you are um, being um, influenced uh, and you can do that with promotion board as well but it's a great way of you just thinking about collating your evidence or your scenario into well, what key three points am I going to make or raise here what are three issues in relation to those and what points do I want to make about my leadership actions so again it's just a framework for you to think through but clearly it works whether you call it the, the power or the theory of threes um, doesn't really matter um, and then what, what the individual's then done is, is some things really stood out for you, from your inspector toolkit for me personally. The personal statement, and funnily enough, as luck would have it, no such thing as luck when you're preparing for promotion, I was asked, have you got anything to add to your questions? Well that, for those who don't know about it, is a wonderful opportunity, a very warm invite for you to be able to add more value to what you've already uh, said to your responses in the interview. If they ever ask you that, uh, have you got anything you'd like to say or have you got anything you'd like to add to your questions? Uh, well prepared candidates will know that is a fantastic opportunity to deliver a personal statement and they're covered in my uh, digital toolkit. Um, in response I gave them a great rally cry at the end of the interview, at the end of my interview on why they should pick me. And everything about your promotion interview, your opportunity, your board, um, is about you why they should pick you. Everything you're saying is convincing and influencing and persuading all leadership skills, that panel, to select you on what you're saying, how you're behaving there and then in that interview. Yes, it's contrived, yes, you're under pressure, but it's also an opportunity that everybody has to be able to convince and persuade and influence the board that you are someone uh, uh, who is worthy of the promotion and you're able to articulate why they should pick you over the other 57 people waiting to come in over the next week or so. Uh, and it really is about that competitive element and that's where this preparation comes in. Um, although I couldn't remember any of the main questions I was asked, I do recall that why me speech. Um, the evidence formula, so remembering uh, Lima, Charlie, Oscar, or LCO, it's a little mnemonic in there which helps elevate sergeant evidence to inspector evidence and it works every time as a filter you can lay over your evidence or over your verbal responses just to make sure you're getting those three points correct which helps elevate that sergeant evidence to inspector evidence. Um, <clears throat> this allowed me to make sure I kept my responses at inspector level and not to fall back to the default sergeant level which I had done previously. Strategic awareness, uh, linking this into my answer. Um, similarly to the above, this allowed me to keep looking up in a strategic direction, if you like, and not just out of the trenches, uh, which is more in line with the sergeant's kind of review. 
um, and Sargent's answer. So again, his, his, his analogy, not mine, there around um, the difference between the two, but yes, I cover strategic, and it's one of those areas why sergeants don't make inspector, is because they often give good sergeant evidence, and uh, it's not any uh, indication of strategic awareness or strategic thinking, both of which are covered in the digital toolkits. Um, your blogs, well again I've alluded to those, those are free at policepromotion.blog, lots of them all about leadership, policing, topical, relevant information for you as a promotion candidate. Um, keeping myself appraised of the issues, any talking points and the wider awareness of policing that I added into my answers. This inspired me uh, to do my own research around particularly the Federation Welfare and Morale Staff Surveys. Um, to have a greater depth around staff issues for any welfare type questions and you're almost guaranteed those today uh, in relation to some part of a promotion selection process whether it's a scenario a briefing or questions you know and uh, again for those of you that may know i've already done some videos on youtube like this around welfare and well-being you can just sit down with a coffee and listen make some notes and add them into your own preparation so finally my return on investment is significant i am definitely all in on the return on investment concept the cost is now insignificant when considering my pay rise and my linked pension as you say steve you get it back in your first inspector pay so that's very much around return on investment uh, and your attitude to that uh, sometimes some people think roi is a risk of inaction and it might well be because if you've got the right attitude to return on investment I try and price my products, or I do price my products at the point where when you're successful on your board, you get it back in your very first paycheck in the new rank. And I don't think I can be fairer than that in terms of running a business and providing all the free content to keep up to date and making sure those toolkits are as relevant as they could be, depending on all the different promotion selection processes that go across across 43 plus forces. So um, return on investment and the attitude is, is, uh, is something that was covered there. Um, I've no idea why I haven't come across your material prior. Well, I'm trying to drop these uh, links in, policepromotion.blog, ranksuccess.co.uk, um, rank success on YouTube. Uh, there's a ton of free information and resources there available for you. Um, for the first time in years, I'm going to rest and settle firmly into my new post without having to worry about any upcoming boards, paper sifts or applications. I've definitely earned it. I've achieved my goal. And I've set out that I set out, and I want to enjoy this moment. Um, as per your guidance for CPD and development plans, this will allow me to collate and consider evidence for future opportunities. I'm really looking forward to showing what I can do and to see where the new ch next chapter of my career takes me. I feel I'm on the right path to success finally. Uh, so that's a new inspector candidate, and uh, I mean, for me, I hope you've got some insights from that. I hope you found it helpful and useful. Uh, I certainly got some from it, and I'll be back with another uh, video in due course. And until then, take care and stay safe.